Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back. Today, I will be reacting to another video by Destiny, and this one is called Destiny Puts Fresh and Fit and Sneeko on the Spot with Tough Questions. And just for transparency's sake, I will say that I'm not the biggest fan of Fresh and Fit or Sneeko. If you check out my other reactions to them, you will see exactly why. And I think it's really important to lay out those disclaimers at the very beginning of these videos just so I don't waste your time. Right, because if you're coming in with a heavy bias and I'm coming in with a heavy bias, chances are I'm not going to be able to provide any perspectives that will change your mind or alter your fundamental beliefs. And the same is probably true the other way around when you put your comments in the comment section. Although I would like to believe that I am open-minded enough and mature enough to analyze the arguments for what they are as opposed to dismissing them right off the bat because I have some sort of ideological attachment or allegiance to thought camp. I don't necessarily subscribe to any of these communities and I always cringe when people try to like label me and box me in based on a particular belief that I have. Thankfully it doesn't happen very often because I'd like to believe that my thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are developed by this internal rubric that I have to make sense of the world. But we all know that we are susceptible to social conditioning and that based on our experiences, based on our upbringings, we're more likely to gravitate to certain messages over others. So that was a really long winded way of saying if you don't want to sit through me assisting Destiny and his critique of fresh and fit or Sneeko's arguments, I completely understand. And who knows, I might end up criticizing Destiny himself. Lord knows that I do have a few criticisms of some of the ideas he's put forth. You know, I'm nowhere close to the size that he is, but who knows, maybe one day we sit down over coffee and hash it out. Well, a girl no. going in Kansas City, it's like getting flown out to Dubai. Yes, yeah, she is, bro. No, no. No. I guarantee you guys you're going to get tonight. You're coping. Man. Oh, I just want to hear, for, for the record, yeah. for you three to answer this, uh -oh. what percentage of college women do you think are being flown around the world? Very I want to hear little. from all if three of you. If I argue, little. I want to hear. Off of, like, probability-wise, if I argue, 30, 40, 50? Holy no. shit. Whoa. Just to start, that is fucking insane. So as someone who has attended and graduated from multiple colleges and went on to teach at the college level, I can honestly say that I've never had a female student who sent me an email saying, I can't come to class because I'm in Dubai right now. The idea that 5% of college age women are being flown out to different countries by wealthy men to have sex is absolutely absurd to me. It doesn't even register in my brain. I'm not sure if Fresh has ever been on a college campus or has ever attended college, but the idea that you're going to have a substantial portion, thousands of women out of college taking flights outside of the country when none of the girls I've been with even have passports. It's just absurd. It's ridiculous. You, I, know here, seen, I know you've seen the Courtney Ryan videos and don't equate this like, oh, Miami girls are different. They step back out of necessity. Okay. I think I understand what he's referring to when he cites the Courtney Ryan videos. I've seen clips of them from ABBA and Preach. And what I gather is that those videos are A, highly edited, and B, the questions that are posed are highly scripted. And the intent seems to box women into three categories. Either you're a hoe, you're a gold digger, or you're an airhead with unrealistic expectations of what you're looking for from a man. Now, those categories of women do exist, but Courtney Ryan's videos put out the optical illusion that they are the majority of women. When in all reality, yes, some women do have super high standards. Some women are very promiscuous and have no interest in committing to one single man. And others are looking for a man with money who will take care of her as if she is his child. Those women do exist. However, what I don't like about Courtney Ryan's videos is that um, it disproportionately shifts accountability to one gender over another. And I would be saying the same thing if some like fucking simp of a man created a channel where he selected and interviewed guys who gave answers that reinforce negative stereotypes about guys, right? Because I do think there's enough 
I don't want to say blame. I mean, dating and romance are just so complicated, especially in our day and age. So I'm not going to say blame, but there's more than enough accountability to go around, right? Um, a lot of guys who complain about not being able to find women, uh, you know, don't have their shit together at all. And what I've noticed is that the more you have your shit together, the more appealing you become to women, right? And it makes sense. Would you want to be with a woman who doesn't have her shit together? Well, I mean, maybe you're Captain save a and I, I hate using that phrase. So maybe I should edit that out. Maybe I won't. Okay, maybe you want to be Captain save a and maybe you want to go out there and rescue women like they're like damsels in distress because you're trying to fill a void within your heart. And the only worth you get comes from when you're putting out fires and helping grown ass women figure their shit out when the onus is on them to figure their own shit out. Maybe that's you. But a lot of women out there don't want that shit. I know that the incel community emphasizes physical attributes and how if you're tall, muscular, and your jawline is sharp, that places you at a significant advantage in terms of your ability to attract women. I know that the incel community overemphasizes that, but what I'm telling you is there are certain things that you could do in your life that will go a long way. If you can make sure that you're keeping up with your facial hair, you don't even have to grow facial hair. But if you do, make sure that you're keeping up with it. Not like me. You see, my shit is all like scraggly and stuff. I look like a, um, what are those dogs, man? Uh, not, not a poodle, but um, a schnauzer, you know, where they get the hair all in their eyes and stuff. But there are little things like that, little tweaks that you can make in your life. Try to improve your social skills. Go out there, talk to people. Actually be an attentive listener when someone else is talking. Show genuine interest and curiosity. If you're an adult male and you live with your parents because you're trying to save up money, that is completely fine. But what would really help is you transitioning to full independence at some point and having your own place that you can take a girl back to. What about your physical health? You know, are you going to bed at crazy times? And you know, think about things like your, your skin complexion. Do you glow when you walk outside? You gotta have the glow. You gotta have the glow. And the only way you get the glow is by drinking water. See, this is coconut water. This isn't um, natural water, but it's something. You know, it'll give you that glow. There are little things that you can do which will not only make you more attractive to women, but they will also enrich your personal life and make your journey more palpable, more satisfying, more fulfilling. Because once you start making these changes with women in mind, you get into murky territory because you start living your life to impress women. You don't want to do that because in the process of doing so, you end up forgetting who you are. See what I'm saying? You have to be able to forge an identity separate from how women perceive you. And how does that come out? That comes out through confidence. You have to commit to actions that build your confidence, commit to actions that build your self-esteem. Go volunteer in your community. Try to excel in the classroom. Go read books. And I'm not talking about self-help books. You could read self-help books. Read books about history, about politics, about romance, fiction and nonfiction. And don't be afraid to get rejected. Don't be afraid to get rejected. That's what it's all about. See, too many of these guys out here online are recommended shortcuts. They want you to take shortcuts because that's what they have done in order to attract women. Shit, for all I know, Fresh and Fit were virgins before they had their cash and their clout. Don't take shortcuts. You got to go out there, talk to women, get rejected, keep getting rejected, and make small adjustments in your interactions until you find the one that's right for you. See, that's the thing. Too many people get rejected and then they get in their feelings. And listen, all you got to do is stay the course. If you stay the course, the rejections are going to hurt less over time. Anytime a girl says that she's not interested, says that she's taken, even though you know she's not, doesn't text you back, or even gives you the wrong number. Every time that happens, it gets easier to bear so long as you stay the course. And understand that rejection is not something that is specific to our live reality, right? Because girls get rejected all the time. You just don't hear about it. 
you and me, we're so caught up in our feelings and our emotions and our insecurities that we don't ever take time to think about, wow, I wonder how like women are feeling in this dating market. Damn, I wonder if they ever deal with loneliness. I wonder if they ever deal with rejection. I wonder if they ever feel like the pursuit for romance is pointless. We don't think about that because a lot of men, our pain is so blaring, it's so loud that it distracts us from how other people feel. Do you think, do you really think that they want to settle down with the average guy? We could do it right now. I'm gonna, no, so. it's that's a dumb it. question because <laughs> nobody wants average. Like even an average guy, given like the opportunity, wouldn't want the average woman. I Everybody wants average guys average. would be happy. But I think there are average. a lot of, if you go talk to normal people, that's how I like the world of YouTube and shit, there are lots of average men with average women. Most people <laughs> date and marry within their class, within their education, within their race, within their geographic region. That happens like 95% of people around the world. Like, yeah, of course, why are most marriage rates declining so much? And why are marriage rates declining for a whole bunch of reasons that don't have yeah. to do with the one dimensional analysis? This is of pretty a much a woman's the celebrity one time on Instagram and now she won't go back. Well, it's to it's guy. not just the celebrity thing, but it's all of hypergamy. That's why there's less marriage. No. People are like, don't know how to settle. Hypergamy has nothing to do with marriage. Like Destiny is saying, there are a whole host of reasons as to why marriage rates are going down. And among them are increasing numbers of men and women who are actually delaying marriage. So taking their time before they make such a earth shattering commitment because marriage is a serious commitment, right? Ideally, when you propose to someone, you're proposing to stay with them for the rest of their life. And there are also many couples out there who are choosing to live together rather than marry. And they do that as a precursor to marriage or an alternative to marriage. And there are a whole host of other reasons, right? Like debt, things like debt. Think about this. If you met a woman who was up to her neck in credit card and student loan debt, let's say $80,000 total, and she was just starting her career, maybe she's looking for a job, maybe she's working a job making $40,000 a year. Do you really think it would be smart to marry her after a year or two years while she's trying to keep up with all of her debt? No, because when you get married, the explicit agreement is that you're working together as a team. Your issues are my issues. My issues are your issues. And we're going to work together and support each other until we both make it to the promised land. But you have to understand that making such a commitment under such chaotic and unstable circumstances could really backfire on you. So if anything, I think people are getting smarter about not jumping into marriage too quickly. Things like high rent prices, things like debt, things like car payments are hurting a lot of millennials and Zoomers. And that's one of the reasons why people divorce is for financial reasons, financial insecurity, financial instability. One partner not being on the same page with the other partner about how money is being spent and dispersed. Why? Because they didn't wait long enough to understand each other's spending habits. Because they were moving so fast, they never took the time to sit down and have a mature adult conversation about how money should combine, how it should be kept separate, how it should be invested. They, they didn't have these conversations because they were moving off passion and emotion. And... It's interesting that these red pill guys claim to advocate for stoicism when all of their prescriptions indicate you should be moving off of passion and impulsivity. That's why so many of these guys drink all the time. They go to clubs and they drink and then and they smoke. They think it's cool to drive in these luxury cars that could get you killed and having a thousand one night stands with women because they're emotional and they're impulsive. You're playing the game again where you're saying one guy f***s a lot of women, it seems one guy dates a lot of women. I I doesn't keep not, women out of the it's dating It's bigger market. than just the celebrity thing. It's Tinder, it's social media. People think that they have so many options now because of our phone. It's not, it's not just the celebrity. Okay, <laughs> newsflash, because men don't know this. Women have always had a lot of options. Always. Since the year zero, always. every single that's woman. Not, has, that's kind of corny, her, her response to that. Don't know this. Women have always had a lot of options. Always. Since no. the year zero, always. every single that's woman has been offered by every single guy they talk to. No, yes. Now they talk to until you know, that doesn't matter. Yeah, since that's because guys are so, we're not fucking picky enough. That's an issue with us. We're like, um, 
and I hate to bag on us. I hate to bag on, but we're like pigs. You know how pigs, you put the food in the trough. It doesn't matter what you put in the trough. Pigs are going to eat it. As soon as men start valuing our time, our energy, as soon as we start becoming more selective about who we give our bodies to, as soon as that happens, we will be better off. But if you want to live a hedonistic lifestyle where you have no filter and you go around giving dick to any woman who will take it, then of course, women are going to feel empowered by all the options they have because they know that most guys have low standards. I'm not, I'm not, well, I am now, but a younger Manny, I had low standards and that shit is unattractive. I don't care who you are. If you have low standards, that shit is unattractive and you're going to get used. It's to a point where men are literally paying women for sex. Do you know how fucking crazy that is? But these are the guys you look up to, guys who pay women to be around them. That's how low our fucking standards are. Is, is men, we actually pay women to be around us. How many women are paying men for sex? And the reason why I'm getting so passionate about this subject is because um, the combination of women having extremely high standards and men having extremely low standards is partly what's created this imbalance, if you will. And you have people out here who admire Andrew Tate and fucking Myron and um, Future is another one that, you know, he's become a meme for all the young boys. You know, every young boy wants to be like Future because he's a toxic king. But if we look at somebody like Future, he has eight different baby mamas that he pays child support to on a monthly basis. He admitted in an interview to showering women with gifts worth upwards of $2 million. And that was in one year. So it's always mind boggling to think that a substantial portion of young men want to be just like future. I'm sorry, but men thinking it's okay to pay for a woman's attention is fucking pathetic. It shows a lack of dignity and a lack of self-respect. It shows that you will go to any length for pussy, even if it means draining your own bank account. So yeah, that's my stance on paying for sex or paying for female attention or making a lot of money just so you could surround yourself with women. See, y'all might not see it this way, but I think men who use money to attract girls might as well be the most ardent feminists alive. They're changing women's lives for the better each and every single day. Every month is Christmas when the father of your child is future and you're collecting millions of dollars in child support. So I don't ever wanna hear that again. I don't wanna hear someone refer to future as a toxic king. Yeah, he's toxic, but not in the way that you think it is. This man's entire persona is built on buying attention from women and barely breaking even due to all the child support he has to pay. And that's who y'all look up to? It's like, when will men ever learn? You cannot pay a woman to love you or be loyal to you. It doesn't work like that. Paying for a woman's attention, especially at the beginning, never ends well. Stop trying to take shortcuts in your dating life. Go out there, talk to women, get rejected, get rejected again, and keep getting rejected until you find the one that is right for you. Not the next man, you. She doesn't have to be a 10, she just has to be right for you. She doesn't have to have the fattest ass, she just has to be right for you. It's frustrating, and I know I'm going on a rant here. I know I'm going on a rant, but fuck the reaction, I'm taking over. Man, how do you expect a woman to love and respect you for who you are when she doesn't even know who you are? You haven't even developed strong enough socio-emotional skills to communicate to her who you are, to show her who you are. She just knows you have money. She don't know you. She just knows you got money. And I'll be the first one to say it. I can't stand a gold digger. I think they are the closest things to parasites since, since the Wall Street bankers in the 2008 financial crisis. That's what I think about gold diggers. I think they're extremely shallow. I think they think they're goal oriented, but in all reality, their goal is to capitalize off of someone else's goal that they put in the work to achieve. And I also think they have strong sociopathic tendencies. If your mission every day you wake up in the morning is to chase after a man's money, 
living an empty life. But guys, what do you expect when you lead with cash? You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry. You cannot use money to attract girls and then get mad at them for wanting some of that money. That literally makes no sense. And it's crazy how these guys in the red pill community, they call themselves advocates for men whilst condoning this type of behavior. If you participate or pay for strippers, prostitutes, only fans, you can't claim to be an advocate for men. You can't. Sorry. You don't get to make that proclamation because the research is clear. And it says that these enterprises do more harm than good to our society. And it says that they warp, distort, and destroy gender relations between men and women. And here's my last piece of dating advice. And I, I never thought I would be sitting behind a fucking camera on YouTube giving dating advice like a fucking idiot. But here I go. Never, ever, ever take dating advice from a rich entertainer. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Fresh and Fit can't give you good dating advice because they took the shortcut that very few of us get to take. So they can't give you good dating advice. Andrew Tate can't give you good dating advice because none of these guys were getting pussy before they had a dime to their name. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. What you need to do if you're having trouble finding romance, one, get your fucking shit together. You are not entitled to a girlfriend or a fiance or a wife. Get your shit together. Find out who you are, what the fuck your purpose is. And if you meet someone throughout that process, great. That's, that's your girl. That's the one. But you better make sure that when she presents herself to you, you have your shit squared away to the extent that you don't fuck that up. Because you also get that. You also have a lot of guys who complain about women are this, women are that. I can't find a good women. There are no good women out there. But they don't tell you how many relationships they've fucked up. So accountability goes both ways. Fuck it. We're going to turn this into a Courtney Ryan video. Lastly, go out and find a mentor that will show you, not tell you, that will show you he could pull a girl from any background without a dime in his pocket because his lessons will carry the most practical utility. Not what the fuck you get from Sneeko or Fresh and Fit. These guys, if you took their fucking... Oh, I'm getting heated. If you took every last dollar out of their pocket, women would be fucking repulsed by the sight of them. Why the fuck would a woman want to settle down with someone like Sneeko or Myron where they're always yelling and screaming all the time and calling people names and, you know, dragging people's character through the mud. Everything that comes out of their mouth is negative. The shit, they just spew toxicity, bro. Why would any woman want to be around that? Maybe they're, they'll find other women just like them who are toxic. Maybe. But don't for a second let them fool you into thinking that they have all the answers when it comes to dating or anything. What the fuck? What is their expertise? What is their expertise? Somebody tell me what credentials they have, what training they have. Is there a fucking peer review process for this shit? Or do you just turn on the camera, say whatever comes to mind? And, you know, so long as you say it with conviction, people just run up your views and you pop off and get famous. Is that how this shit works? Somebody loop me in. You're 11 years old. You, you got guys that are hitting on you constantly. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not stopping there. And these guys wonder why women don't respect us the way they used to. Let me tell you something. Nine times out of 10, when you carry yourself with respect, you'll get it back. But paying for a woman's attention or complaining like a little bitch about how you can't pull women is not going to get you respect. If you want to make a woman dry, start complaining. Start complaining. Complain, go fucking complain. You want a woman to be dry and definitely around you? Complain to her and complain to her about women. Okay, all right, I'm done dishing out tough love today. Um, listen, the moral of the story is that guys like Fresh and Fit, Andrew Tate, Future, men who buy and sell women, because that's essentially what they're doing. They are not the gold standard for what it means to be a man. And I just want you to remember that because a lot of people seem to be getting it twisted.
where they think buying and selling women is like the cool thing to do now like the that's fucking that shit is repulsive bro do you not respect yourself is your personality that vacuous is your ability to emotionally stimulate a woman to the extent that she wants to submit to you completely that non-existent that you have to pay for her do you not know how to make a woman feel good without money fuck man oh i didn't want to do this today uh, like no, no hold on men, men right. see tinder today and they're like oh my god a woman can open her phone and find 100 guys to f bro in 1980 a woman can walk outside and find 100 guys to f it's not no, new no you're right however yeah, you scale baby girl don't fucking yeah and yeah and agree with him because that's not good for you either the fact that guys have low standards is not good for you either people need to come up with reasonable standards right because guys with low standards they end up using victims of human sex trafficking they end up using prostitutes they end up using strippers to satisfy their sexual urges and what do you think that does to the psyche of women when from a very early age they're taught that their value is rooted in their ability to seduce a man sexually she could think she's feeling empowered by agreeing with destiny with that smirk on her face these enterprises are hurting all of us they're just hurting us in different ways right them girls that didn't want to be kept in that house with andrew tate imagine the psychological trauma that they left with Andrew Tate having a watch over his back, not knowing when he's going to get arrested because some girl said that he was trafficking her. Imagine the trauma and the stress that he's walking around with. See, this ain't a matter of how toxic masculinity hurts women. Men have to start talking about how toxic masculinity is hurting us. We know it hurts women. We got to talk about how it's hurting us, how it's altering our behavior to make us more reckless, more impulsive, less empathetic, and how that's hurting us. Bro, in 1980, a woman could walk outside and find 100 guys to f It's not new. No, you're right. However, there's skill. Before, they have to go outside and find the guys. Now they can be in their home, on a plane, and nigga, it's like, for example, in this case, the skill's different. It's global. What the it's fuck? not global. This is incoherent. I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit through this. I've already, I know some people are going to like hate me for doing this. They're like, damn, man, you didn't even react to the arguments and you just went on this diatribe understandable you know go ahead and give me a down vote but uh, maybe maybe we'll do it another time everything that's going to be said in this conversation is not something i haven't heard before i'll do a few more minutes of it though for 99 percent of people a girl no. going in kansas city it's like i'm flown out to dubai yes yeah, she is bro no, no. 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 Look at today. <laughs> you guys are nice. wild yeah. I you guys are wild tonight. you're coping man. Well, i just want to hear for, for the record yeah. for you three to answer this uh -oh. what percentage of college women do you think are being flown around the oh, world this was a dumb shit i don't even we gotta skip it because it's this was a dumb shit. They spend more time talking about women than they do having sex with them. And I've been around some players, some players who don't, they ain't gonna talk too much about the women that they with. But you know, you know, I'm at dinner with one of my guys. He gets up, goes to the bathroom. His phone goes ping. The shit lights up. It lights up and it is full of messages with fucking heart emojis and um, I heart emojis. You already know that he's getting women. He ain't, we ain't gonna sit down at dinner and talk about women all the time while we're at dinner. I mean, we might bounce ideas off of each other in terms of advice or sanity checks or how to navigate different relationships with women, but neither of us are gonna sit at that table and start making wild generalizations about what women want and what women need because we both know that the answer is not black and white. So we're not gonna sit at a table like these fucking inbreds and pretend we have all the answers. I understand that it's the internet. This is a very polarized space. People come in with all sorts of opinions and they wanna fight to the death in order to substantiate those opinions, even if those opinions are not substantiated in reality. I get that. But I wanna let you know that this, this the way they're interacting with each other, the shit that they're talking about, you have to be a very diluted individual to think that gender dynamics play out exactly the way that fresh and fit frame them. You got to be you. I, they have the saying right in the fucking in these online. They say touch grass. They say to you got to touch grass, bro. Get the get out of your house. Get out of your apartment. I know. I know you're scared. I'm scared, too. I don't really like to be out, especially during the winter. It's dark. It's gloomy it's wet it's cold you know it's i i don't want to be out but i know it's good for me 
You got to do what's good for you. Sitting in front of the computer, listening to this shit and watching this shit is not good for you, especially if you've developed a basic understanding of these concepts and how they play out in the real world. Anything past that, conversations like these are just going to turn your brain into worms and you don't want that. So instead of sitting in chat or in the comment section talking about women, go talk to women. Don't even talk to women. Talk with them. Talk with them. Don't talk to them. Talk with them. Because any man could talk to a woman, but not every man could talk with them. See, there's a difference between talking to somebody and talking with them. The kind of women that want you to talk to them are not what I would call, that's not what I would call a high value woman. A woman that's just going to let you talk to her and talk down to her. No. I mean, maybe your self-esteem is so low and you like manipulating the emotions of women to boost your own self-esteem because you feel so worthless on the inside that you prefer to be in a conversation where you're talking to a woman or talking down to her. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you. And I've had my moments here and there, but that shit is not healthy. So the best advice I could give you, and I hate giving advice, and this is, I think the first time I've ever given like like straight up advice and just like hijacked my own reaction video um to give it but i think it's important my advice is do things that are healthy do things that are healthy not just healthy for your body these guys tell you to go to the fucking gym all the time okay if you go to the gym but you suffer from i don't know bipolar disorder you still bipolar motherfucker if you go to the gym and you still have unresolved childhood trauma that is manifesting in different parts of your life that you are unaware of because you haven't taken the steps to resolve that trauma, you still got trauma, motherfucker. If you're dumber than a box of rocks and you're going to the gym to lift 300 pounds, you're still dumber than a box of rocks, motherfucker. You have to do what's best for you and then these things have a tendency to fall into place. But when you start playing the blame game, when you start saying women are this, women are that, you, okay, you, you're talking to me about women. I've experienced the, the same way that when you're standing outside and there's like a rain shower, I've experienced that. And I also know what it's like to live in a drought. So I don't want to hear that. Manny, you're attractive or um, look at you, how you could get on the camera like this. You must be so confident and charismatic. Don't give me that shit. So yeah, the... Y'all take this, take it with a grain of salt. I know you're going to go to other videos and you listen to other people, but um, this is noise, man. This is noise. Don't pay these people no mind. Don't pay these people no mind. Go have your own experiences. This is your journey. You can watch these videos. That's fine. But don't for a second think that they are meant to be informative because they're not. This is entertainment. As far as I'm concerned, maybe you learn little shit here and there, but I can't i can't okay if you enjoyed this reaction please comment like and subscribe i will pick up the pace because i'm on vacation and i will be for the next few weeks you can look forward to more videos i look forward to interacting with you more in the comment section and on instagram if you want to follow me there i'll see y'all next time peace